Hello and welcome to Sky Career Talks, where we display why it's great to learn with us and communicate. I'm your host, David James. Today, I'm super excited to be speaking with Quentin Robinson. Quentin graduated from the ITI program here at Rutgers Sky. Quentin now serves as the head of product and engineering for Amazon's branded connected devices team. He previously served in a role as a product manager in a devices team at Amazon, and prior to that at Verizon, where he led the IoT connected devices. Quentin brings an expertise in building successful consumer and enterprise products. He also has led product UX and engineering teams on a hardware and software initiatives, earning a reputation for diving deep and turning projects around. We're excited to gain Quentin's perspective on a number of topics and how to begin leveraging those skills now to enter this field. I present to you my interview with Quentin Robinson. Okay, so thank you for taking the time to be here with us, Quentin. Before we begin, I must ask, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for asking, David. Yeah, no problem. So to kick us off, give us a brief overview of your career journey so far. Uh, yeah, so um, today I'm the head of product and engineering uh, for Amazon's branded connected devices team at Amazon. Um, prior to uh, to taking this role at Amazon, uh, I uh, had a role working as a product manager um, in a devices team at Amazon. And prior to that, I uh, worked at Verizon, where I led uh, their um, IoT uh, connected devices teams, building out some new devices and services for Verizon. Um, uh, I worked as a um, subject matter expert on wearable devices there, and um, uh, and I actually started at Verizon <laughs> as an intern, um, and uh, from there I joined the network team and worked on uh, in a devices organization and kind of stumbled on product management, um, you know, a, a couple of years into my uh, career journey there, and it's kind of history from there, right? So I really liked the aspect of being able to uh, come up with really innovative customer focused um, ideas and, and a vision uh, and working with engineering teams to help execute on that vision and deliver products for customers. Um, so prior to that, um, you know, when I was in uh, school, I, I was at SHI and, uh, you know, and um, working on uh, ITI, my ITI degree there um, and to, uh, yeah, so that's a little bit about my journey. Is this a field or path you always knew you wanted to uh, go into, or did it, or did you make some pivots along the way? That's a great question. I, um, as I mentioned, I started as an intern. It was like an IT internship, so I knew I wanted to do something with computers, right? That's why I was an ITI, but I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do. So when I started working at Verizon as an IT intern started getting exposure to some of the different careers that um, the full-time staff were doing, right? So you had some folks who were um, doing some program management, um, some pseudo product management-ish. <laughs> uh, you had some engineers that were building code. Uh, and building code's cool, uh, but uh, not necessarily my cup of tea. I really wanted to think bigger about how uh, we could uh, deliver the right type of product and why we want to deliver products for customers. Uh, and then, you know, work with the technical team to make sure that we're building the right thing <laughs> in the right way for customers. So um, I, once I started getting exposure to like the product and program management um, side of Verizon, I started gravitating more towards that. Then I got an opportunity to hop over to the devices organization where um, they were trying to think about new innovative things uh, that devices should be working on over the next few years. Um, so I talked to my leadership and said, hey, look, give me a shot. I think I can uh, take a take a stab at this and put together uh, a few uh, at the time, like vision presentations on what where we can go, but also grounded that in the technology that the team was working on at the time. Uh, and that kind of helped uh, kind of springboard me into being one of the thought leaders on the team. And, and then slowly but surely, I kind of realized that what I was doing was really product management. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about the future, creating a vision, working with the engineering teams to make sure we're executing against the vision. 
Uh, and sooner or later, <laughs> two years later, I actually got the title of product manager. It didn't come right away. Uh, but it kind of stumbled on it, you know, and all in all kind of stumbled on product management, but I really liked it once, uh, once I realized what it was. Uh, and, um, uh, and from there, you know, just kept at it, um, kept expanding the types of products I was working on, um, always making sure that I focused on uh, what's the best thing for the customer and kind of working back from there. No, that's great. Um, so I'm curious. Um... I'm curious, uh, what does a normal day look like for you, right? Because you know, two days are the same. And is it the traditional corporate work model, you know, a nine to five or um, a flexible, you know, wor uh, working hour model? Yeah, that's a great question. Well, now I lead a product and engineering team. Um, so my day is, is a, uh, it, it can actually vary <laughs> what I'm doing. So I'll always cover just a few things like, um, you know, uh, on any given day, I may be working closely with my product managers to think about what's the the vision the, that we need to work on over the next three years for the product line, or what are the next core set of features we need to deliver for products today. Um, I may be working with the engineering team to see what are the major challenges that we have on a roadmap over the next few months that we need to work through, um, or working back with my engineering managers to talk about headcount and how we continue to grow the team. Um, working with uh, some, of our, some of my leadership to make sure that they understand where the team is going and what the vision looks like. Uh, or working with partner teams um, that are also building devices and services at Amazon to uh, make sure that we're all on the same page about what we're building, where we're going together. Um, so any given day, I may have several different <laughs> meetings that I'm in, um, uh, but generally the idea is to ensure that we're moving in a forward direction, right? The team is building the right products. The product, uh, the engineers are building the right products. The product managers are working on the right products. Uh, we, we have what we need in order to make sure the team can keep progressing. And, and then ultimately we're delivering the right things that customers are going to enjoy. Well, within that answer, you also mentioned some skill sets that um, are very needed within this position. I'm curious, what are type of skills that students could be leveraging now, both technical and interpersonal? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll start with the technical skill sets. So um, product management is a super interesting field because um, it's kind of the intersection between business and engineering, right? So uh, on the technical side, being able to understand or knowing enough to be dangerous, being able to understand uh, technically how things work. So whatever you're working on, whether it's a cloud solution, you're building a device, you're building a website, understanding how all these th the different components that make up that solution come together, you know, at a high level. What's the system design like how how? does data get stored? Yeah, we typically know it gets stored in a database, but how does it get stored in a database, right? Because then that can help as you're deciding on what the next set of features are, right? Where you're like, okay, well, I can tell the engineering team to work on this new feature, but knowing that that's pretty difficult, probably gonna take them six months to do. Maybe we wanna work on a slightly different feature that's gonna take them three months to do. So kind of understanding that technical aspect. Now you don't have to be coding, <laughs> but, you know, you understand the high level and how all of it fits together. That's going to be super important as a product manager, in my opinion. Now, also, interpersonal skills are really important, too. So being able to communicate effectively with partners, um, you know, you're working with a lot of people. Uh, being a product manager, you're typically you don't normally start with a team. <laughs> uh, the, the title manager and product manager is a little uh, deceiving. <laughs> You don't have tons of people that report to you. You have to influence without authority. So, and a lot of times you're working with partner teams, working with support teams like marketing and legal privacy security teams to make sure that um, they understand your idea. They understand your concept. Uh, they're all aligned in what we're building and, and we're all moving in the same direction, right? So being able to effectively communicate that is going to be really important. You don't necessarily need to take like public speaking classes, but being comfortable with communicating um, your vision. And in order to do that, it really just takes practice, right? So you um, being able to 
write down your vision, talk through it, <laughs> uh, you know, and to yourself in the mirror and like, here's what we need to do and here's why we need to do it. And then when you need to convey that to a partner, to either uh, a partner within your company or outside your company, it's a lot easier because you're already like run through it on, on your own, right? So I would say those are really the two like really important skills that you need to start with. Um, as a product manager, being able to dive uh, deep technically, deep-ish <laughs> technically into um, whatever the system design is, and also being able to kind of take a step back and talk about and communicate uh, what the vision is for the product. Well, I'm curious um, in talking about um, all these different skill sets, even outside of your industry, would you say, um, being that there are so many free resources and certifications out there, do you think that's um, needed for to be within this role or within this space or industry? Yeah, it's a, that's an excellent question. So just to make sure I completely got it, I think, uh, do, do you need certifications in order to be in this industry? Is that the question? Or perhaps I'm um, brushing up uh, using um, free resources such as Udemy or Coursera or any of those online learning platforms. Absolutely. YouTube. Yeah. Um, so I'll just give some anecdotes from my side. So uh, I'll start on the technical end. <laughs> uh, I When I first started in my career while I was working at Verizon, um, I ended up... Uh, building some apps on the side because I wanted to know how these apps, this app stuff worked. <laughs> so I will watch tons of YouTube videos and, you know, the, the kind of teach me how to build an app. Uh, but it also uh, taught me, you know, the app by itself doesn't work if there's no cloud service, right? So you got to also build out the cloud component of it too. So it, by thinking of like, hey, it'd be cool if I can build out this little app concept. Um, I also need to learn how to build out a cloud component or a cloud service too, and then have the two talk to each other. Um, so YouTube, uh, any of free resources, I would say, on like how system designs work, um, how to build an app, how to build a service, I would highly recommend that anyone who's interested in product management start thinking about looking into those. Um, uh, there are tons of product management certifications. Those aren't bad either. Um, they they kind of give you a baseline skill set. It's kind of more academic, I would say, right? Like here are the things you need to know in order to be successful. But frankly, the major thing with product management is really getting your feet wet, <laughs> getting in there and you, know, you realize that some of the things you learned in a certification or in a book or wherever uh, are kind of difficult sometimes, right? Uh, there's a lot of trade-offs you need to make as a product manager and sometimes they're not always black or white. Um, so. Uh, I would definitely say jumping into free resources is super helpful. Um, certifications can be helpful, but you have to know that there's a set of, you have to have like very clear expectations on where the certifications are actually going to take you, right? So they may help you get your foot in the door in some cases, um, but you still need to be open to learning uh, and taking in a lot of the knowledge that you're going to see on a job and then applying how what you learn in a certification can actually be applied specifically in your role, right? So um, those are the things I would say, yeah, definitely free resources are helpful and certifications are helpful too. Yeah, no, you bring up a good point. Um, it, while it can be used to get your foot in the door if you're not applying it into practice every day or into your overall experience, um, it does tend to go nowhere or it does tend to become harder or they do provide harder scenarios or or in some cases outdated scenarios because technology is always advancing and evolving. That's right. That's right. And that's one of the things, even managing a team, uh, the team I build, uh, manage now, we build products um, like devices for customers uh, uh, and being able to be on the latest technologies. It's really tough because it's continuously evolving um, and also listening to what my engineers are saying, like, hey, have you thought about, have we have we thought about doing this or that? And I'm like, oh, I actually never heard of that. Let me, let me do some research and being open to continuously improving and, and uh, being open to learning new things is gonna be super important here. So I would probably append that to one of the skills that you need to learn uh, or, or need to be um, open to one of the skill sets. Um, I have not stopped learning 
from a technical perspective, uh, from the interpersonal skills, um, a student <laughs> uh, always, right? So uh, it, that's what product management is really interesting because it's similar to most other uh, professional um, uh, professional jobs like being a lawyer or a doctor, in some cases, there's a requirement that you got to go back and recertify and, and test. And that's not necessarily the case of product management. But if you're not up on the latest uh, things, then sometimes it may hurt you, right? Because like, you are you really thinking about what customers are looking for as you're thinking about the vision and the future of product offerings, right? If you're not forward thinking and learning new technologies and new ways to communicate that tech. I'm researching uh, the consumer market, um, the analytics, the different type of trends um, and um, and what the competitor competitor technology companies are doing or, or in terms of any industry. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And uh, researching comp- competing technologies is can be a pitfall, <laughs> uh, right? Because it's it's really interesting when you, initially when I started my career, I um, was like, oh, okay, like what's everyone else doing, right? And yeah, it's easy to kind of do that. But I realized quickly that yes, you absolutely need to know what competitors are doing. But a lot of times competitors are launching products for what they think customers want today. But the product manager's job is to think about what customers want tomorrow. So if you're just looking at what, competitors are doing now, like, right, right, yeah, we should do that too. You're always going to be behind the eight ball. Um, Instead, looking at customer data, (laughs) looking at what customers are saying, right? Like, sometimes customers will just tell you, right? At Amazon, a lot of people um, kind of brush over it. I know when I go to Amazon.com to buy stuff, I look at customer reviews all the time. Right. That's the way that I'm like, okay, well, how does this product work? Is this something I should buy? I don't want to waste my time. But as product managers at Amazon, we read the reviews too. (laughs) We're like, oh, customers are asking for this feature. Like, yeah, like maybe we were not seeing or we didn't initially see that customers wanted that feature, but things have changed. Maybe customers are looking for uh, a new feature today that they weren't a couple of years ago. Right. So um, sometimes it's listening to customers, asking them uh, is is the best bet to figuring out what the long term trajectory or path to a successful product looks like. Oh, and you, you bring up such a great point, right? Because then this could go into any type of industry, really listening to your consumer and the customer base and your audience, rather than trying to predict what do they want in this given moment or trying to, you know, get ahead of the curve. Okay, what do they want 10 years from now? When in reality, they might not want any of it. And, <laughs> right. and it might be lagging behind. Right. That's exactly right. So um, the second part of that question, how does how does one get into this field? You know, whether it's through um, networking, having a LinkedIn presence or having a website or a portfolio to showcase your work and what you've done. Yeah, great question. So a couple of things. I think um, definitely you could be a product manager without a technical background. Definitely seen it. I've worked with awesome product managers without a technical background. I personally think gives you a leg up if you do, (laughs) Um, because you're working with engineering teams. And a lot of times when you're working with engineers, uh, you got to build trust, right? And the best way to build trust is to know what they're saying and speaking their language. (laughs) Now, that doesn't necessarily, like I said, it doesn't mean you have the code, but understanding that's really important in my opinion. So having that technical background is a great first start, right? So whether it's an ITI degree, computer science degree, some engineering degree, that's always a great start to kind of kicking off um, getting into a product management field. Now, uh, you can, my personal journey, I started as an IT intern and then I worked on the network team at, Am- uh, at Verizon um, and doing like as an analyst, <laughs> uh, which is like a, a very generic term for like you're just doing things um, that are pseudo specific to technologies, but nothing like you're not building anything specific, right? You're looking at market trends, understanding where things are going, right? So that type of role kind of prepares you for a lot of product management uh, as well. I've noticed that a lot of people um, are able to jump into like program management first and then work their way over to product management. That's also a great uh, segue. Uh, And the reason being, 
is jumping into like a associate program manager role out of college, for example, is a great way to work very closely with product managers, understand what they're dealing with, but also be able to, uh, as a program manager, understand the dependencies and how things need to be delivered and understand scheduling. And, okay, well, if we do A, then that means that B and C need to happen, right? Uh, and that provides a really good foundation for jumping into product management because then you're, you'll be able to take more highly considered decisions <laughs> when you tell teams that they need to do things. So um, jumping into like an associate um, program manager position is great. Um, some companies, some tech companies um, also have associate product manager positions. Um, so these are like uh, pseudo internships <laughs> for folks that are coming out of um, either uh, bachelors, depending on the, the program. Some require bachelors, some require masters, uh, like a business masters. Um, but depending on the program, you can essentially jump into product management right away, which is great. I think it's uh, it's a good opportunity to do that as well. And in some cases, you're working on it's more rotational, right? So you're working on a product for six months, you're learning, you're understanding how existing product managers are thinking, um, what the, you know, what resources they're using, how they're asking questions, um, how you're taking the things that you learned in school or on the side and applying them to what uh, what your boss is asking for you uh, in, in the real world. Um, so those are a few ways I would say jumping in. First, make sure you have some type of uh, technical or engineering foundation, right? ITI, um, engineering, computer science, some type of degree like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, associate program manager or product manager roles um, are great, uh, great stars, but you can also jump into it as an analyst. Um, the other thing is I would recommend, now again, you don't have to do it like this, but I would, I would recommend um, considering working for companies that have some type of like core technology, right? So a lot of product management roles are really based around what is the future of X technology, whatever it is, right? Even if you're working for like Morgan Stanley, <laughs> they're probably having a product manager think about what's the future of their investment technology tools, right? So being able to start your career in a company which their core product is a technology, like an Amazon or, um, you know, Verizon, I think, is a great example, right? Because they're, they're essentially providing network services for people um, versus uh, another company that, you know, maybe they make like toilet paper. Not saying that's bad, <laughs> but, right? But um, starting with a technology focused company, you'll likely get a lot of the um, foundational skill sets right away on how do I work with engineering teams? How do I make the right trade offs? How do I think about dependencies and schedule and getting things delivered on time. And um, whereas in sometimes with uh, companies that don't have a technology as a core product, um, they're focused on other things, right? They're like, ah, well, we'll just work on operational stuff and we'll get to the technology later, um, right? So again, that's just like general rule of thumb for me, but um, you know, there are tons of companies where you can join as a product manager, they don't necessarily focus on uh, technology first, but I think it's a little bit faster <laughs> if you if you join one that that does have tech. And you mentioned uh, pseudo internships. Um, what do you think about? Um, I know in some fine tech companies, um, they're starting to do or have been doing these two year development programs, which is great for um, someone who just graduated from college or university and looking to, you know, just get their feet wet and, you know, um, and they're being immersed within these apprenticeship type programs. Yes, I think uh, FinTech, by the way, great way to start when it comes to product management, right? But it, it's built into the name of the type of company, like they're focused on technology for a traditionally very difficult area, um, financial services, right? Those types of rotational programs or two-year programs are awesome. Um, I've seen candidates who start there and they're pretty good PMs. Uh, I would say that's a great place to start, right? Um, those, those types of programs you just mentioned, the associate product manager programs, they all kind of give you the same result, which is um, how do I jump in and, and kind of learn from a lot of the existing PMs, the apprenticeship type program, right? Where I can just kind of be a fly on the wall, understand how things uh, work, maybe get a project of my own or a small project of my own that I can deliver 
uh, and have something tangible at the end. <laughs> That's really important too, right? So um, I think they're great. Uh, yeah. So to end, are there any lasting words or of wisdom you can provide students or alumni or perhaps um, your younger self that you wish you knew um, Ooh, when you went to school? For sure. Uh, well, uh, I wish I, I knew about product management sooner. <laughs> like I mentioned, I kind of stumbled upon it, but um, frankly, I, I, I wish I, I would have been able to just immediately jump into a program like an associate PM program, right? I think I probably would have taken a slightly different career trajectory, uh, but I think in a good way. Um, so if I can provide any advice, I would say do tons of research on product management now uh, if you really like that intersection of business and technology. Um, don't wait till later to you like five years, 10 years into your career and you're like, yeah, I want to do product management now. It's probably something you want to think about now. And utilizing LinkedIn, having that ability to just connect with people and perhaps like taking 10 or 15 minutes uh, um, and just interviewing people, you know, what they do on a daily basis, what their position or industry entails. Yeah, that's a great point. I think LinkedIn is a great resource. There are tons of other resources as well, like um, LinkedIn groups or some type of um like there's meetups, for example, where you may have like product manager meetups. Uh, you may not be a product manager yet, but you're really interested in breaking into the field. And that's a great place to a meet other people who are trying to break into the field and B, meet other product managers that are already in the field. Right. So um, meetups, um, joining different groups or clubs that are centric to product management. Uh, and to your point, yep, LinkedIn is a great way. Just, you know, <laughs> looking for product managers at a company you really want to join. Right. And, and adding them, uh, you know, to your LinkedIn. And then you can start to see what are some of the things that they're posting about. Right. And, um, you know, what are some of the things that are really interesting for you? So thank you for taking the time to um, interview with us today, um, Quentin. It's been an honor um, just being able to learn more about your career journey, but also the product management space and um what a day in the life uh, looks like for you and what students can expect from that type of position and field and industry. Yeah, uh, of course. Thank you for the opportunity. That again was my interview with Quentin Robinson. We look forward to connecting with Quentin very soon. Thank you all for joining us for another edition of Sky Career Talks. Be sure to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Also follow our LinkedIn group page, Sky Career Corners, to connect with our brilliant students and alumni. Until next time, I'm David James. Take care.